just nine seconds left in the lead penalty. Giles reacquired from the Rangers in November. To Maroof, out in front, the shot, he scores! Lott, number 11. 26 goals, 29 assists for 55 points for Dino Cicerelli. And he's got the puck at center. Sidesteps a check from Richardson, had him labeled. Dale DeGray, setting up Secord, just parked at the blue line. Secord, out in front, oh, he scores! It was on the line. The red light now goes on. Manuel Viveros is number 32, graduate of the Western Hockey League. Picked up an assist in his first game. Called up December 22nd from the Kalamazoo Farm. Lands breaks his checkup up against the boards. 1-1 tie first period. Gordy Roberts knocked down by Osborne behind the play. Basil McRae can get no further than Ed Olchek. And the stick came up high and clipped Ed Olchek. And he slumps to his knees. Great. Well, Basil McRae uh, was a much sought after free agent. I don't think he's done the job for this team that they expected of him. You know, uh, he was signed. Uh, he had a pretty good run with Quebec last year after they acquired him from Detroit. But he hasn't been able to, to do much for this club in the area of enforcement. And uh, from their record standpoint, I don't think he's really added as much as they expected. Can't come up with it. Giles in behind the net. And Basil McRae is number 17, Keith Acton. Dave Semenko throwing his weight around. He glares. Gloves are down. And there's the bell. And here we go. Semenko and McRae. A couple of good right hands there, Scott. What do you think? Well, McRae's got his hands full with Semenko. He fights anybody. He's not a heavyweight, I don't think, though. Well, we'll give the... Uh, the points, I think, in the early going here to Dave Semenko. I'll tell you what, Basil's fighting back here. Well, you see, the linesmen in an instance like this, they will allow, when they see two players that can handle them, you know, themselves, they'll only go in if one gets into a lot of trouble. It's over right now, but they'll, they'll look at the knuckles on Semenko and McRae, and that's what you get from doing the job. Draped up Fredasek Musil. That was the thud and that was the cheer. It's a good test for his back and shoulder. Here is Partnell trying it again by himself. Takes the shot. He's got some problems here behind the play. Brock and Wendell Clark doing some excessive verbalizing. And he went in and took uh, Broughton out pretty hard along the boards. And Hall was watching the whole thing. And a lot of us do. Minnesota has won 12. The Leafs have won seven. Let's see what happens here. Give this one to the North Stars. Make it 13. There is the horn to win the first period, and we've got some more activity at center ice. Dan Dau, Cicerelli in the middle of it, and Cicerelli sparking the uh, initial conflagration out there. Well, it happened from the faceoff, and uh, Osborne's tied up there with uh, Broughton. We've got Iafredi out there in the role of the peacemaker trying to pull people apart. Well, he and Musil look like they're uh, looking at each other, wanting something to happen as well. Now, Musil will go. He will go. You think he might not? Being a check. Well, he, he had his hands full last different. night. Old check is there. That hit Acton. Iafredi. Leafs continue to set up here with the man advantage. Old check winds. Let's go. He scores! And Old check. He'll give it to Lawton. Lawton just banks it off the glass. Lands chasing after it. Picked up there by Brian Bellows. To Archibald in front of Bellows. A shot, he scores! 2-2 Two -two tie still early in the second period. Pratisek Musil. Sharp angle drive. Besser knocked it in his own net. In an attempt to clear. Dennis Farouk is going to get credit. And after eight straight starts and doing a nice job, the goaltending chores will be turned over to number 31, Ken Reggett. Dennis Baruch is number nine. Basil McRae to set up from Acton. The shot on Reggett is loose in front. They score! Cleared away to the corner again. Bob Brook is number 13. Cicerelli hits an ankle with that, trying to clear it. He falls down. Tries to grab the pocket. It was gloved ahead to Cicerelli, and that's why the whistle blew. There's 15 seconds left. In the Minnesota penalty, Russ Portnell. Had the shot hit Roberts to Rick Lands. Drives the many scores! Woody Roberts, number 25. Up there with Dino Cicerelli, Bob Rouse, Kurt Fraser, and Neil Broughton. Cicerelli got the line, but Fraser was in ahead of the play, and now Cicerelli 
get the stick up high. He will not drop that stick. And he came in and attacked Luke Richardson. That looked a little severe from up here. And now we've got Giles in on top of somebody down there in that pile. Well, I'm afraid he gets up. The initial play uh, after the offside, Richardson had gone over and was just taking out the man on Cicerelli, and Cicerelli took one whack at him and then really went after him. But he, sur I guess Richardson just surprised him from you know playing the man after the offside at the blue line. But Cicerelli, he's really been eating something today because he got involved in an altercation at the end of the first period. Yes, he did. I see Jerry McNamara in the press box talking to John McCauley, wondering about something, severity of the penalty, whatever. But we well, still got hot tempers out here. I think Cicerelli's pretty fortunate that he's in the penalty box and not in the dressing room because he was able to wield that stick uh, on a couple of occasions and none of the officials were able to pick it up. There's McNamara and Johnny Barr there. McNamara watching uh, the television, probably hoping for another replay. We'll have another look at it here. And this Gardens crowd is really on Dino's back now. Here's a look at it, Scott. Well, here's the offside play, and uh, Richardson comes in and takes him out a little bit. And here's the first whack by uh, Cicerelli right up at the face area and now comes down on the back of the neck. And finally, another one before he drops his stick. Almost hit the linesman, Finn, who was in trying to break it up. And, you know, with all the equipment they wear, we, I think we could honestly say 10 years ago, you wouldn't see anything close to this, the use of the stick. And whether they wear helmets or not should be irrelevant. Boria Salming is trying to get Luke Richardson to cool down. He'll stop against the boards. DeGray at the blue line, moves in a bit. Lehman gets the return. Somebody in the slot, there it is. Wendell Clark tries a deflection, knocks it down. Let's it go! He scores! Wendell Clark turns, fires, we're tied at four. Osborne goes for the slot right in front of the net. So does Secord. Lots of traffic there. The shot is wide. Up on the mesh. Cleared by Taco. DeGray controls there. Center out in front. Loose puck in front. Secord can't deflect it. Osborne is knocked down. Bodies flying all over the place. DeGray. I afraid of the shot. It's in front and deflected wide. Fergus. DeGray lets it go. That one goes sailing wide. I afraid of the shot. Scores! I afraid of Smoker from the blue line. And away they come, Al Secor. Five goals in his last six games. He'll clear it in. He's knocked down by Rouse. He's sent flying. Dao's out there instead of Olchek, who's not on the Leaf bench. He must have gone to the dressing room for a problem. We'll keep our eye on that situation. Musil from the point, knocked down in front of the rebound of Zemlak. Reggett's got it. In traffic. Well, Reggett has certainly got the confidence. We see there's Olchek. He's got ice on his left knee behind his left leg and uh, he'll be gone for the night so Dao will have to move in in place of Olchek. Some more great camera work there. Minnesota will break out however. Find a set Musil and Dave Archibald to McClellan. McClellan tries to get around Lands. Now he circles off as Musil breaks for the slot. In front of Bellows. Great save the rebound. They score! And this game is tied at five. And John Brophy cannot believe it. Two seconds, only one. There's the horn, and we've got ourselves overtime. And here we go with overtime with the Leafs. And Minnesota tied at fives. Osborne up high, too far for Wendell Carr. Taco's out of the net. He clears it out of the road. And Kerry Taco was knocked down by Wendell Clark. And Taco goes down. Marouk. Takes a swipe at Wendell Clark. And he just caught him as he went by. And Taco well, went down the heap, Scotty. Yes, he did. And uh, I don't know what any of these North Stars could do if they got a hold of Clark. But I guess for team spirit and everything else to protect the goaltender, you have to do something. But from the standpoint of overtime, there are very few stoppages generally. And here's Taco with uh, trainer Doc Rose giving him first aid and he, I guess uh, the rule book does say that goaltender is not fair game 
And in that instance, he was, uh, you know, there's uh, the crowd booing and everything else. The tempers are really hot. This goes back to the Cicerelli incident with Luke Richardson, perhaps. Guys are still on edge, kind of tight. Well, sure, and uh, that got the Leafs going, that uh, uh, five-minute penalty for fighting and five minutes for uh, the match penalty, which they're intent, intent to injure. And uh, as we may mention, Cicerelli's in a lot of difficulty with that match penalty. And the North Stars, without Cicerelli and Hartsburg, have fought back for this tie into overtime. Three minutes and 45 seconds remain in overtime, Scotty. <laughs> Here is Broughton across the leaf line. A minute coming up. Time left to play. Hot shot in front. Bobbled there by Riggett. And now we've got problems in the corner. Russ Cartnell was dumped. He didn't like it one little bit. And now we've got another scrap here with Wendell Clark. And Brock and Wendell Clark is going to wail on Mr. Brook. even got time to talk to the referee that's a confident fighter well he's talking to him because uh, the linesmen have got their hands full elsewhere and i think from wendell's standpoint it's about over and he's, he's sitting on top of brook watch out for lehman and broughton you never know what's going to happen wendell clark gets separated from bob brook Boy, the fans really don't like this stuff anymore. What happened was Acton took, uh, he gave Cortnell a shove, and Cortnell went head first into the boards, and I think Acton said something to him, and Cortnell come up swinging well, off the Le side. Lehman and Broughton look like they may erupt here any second. We've got Lands all tied up with Gordy Roberts, and this isn't over yet. And now they finally get themselves separated, and I think the sweater tugging has come to a conclusion here. And Clark and Brooke are away from the officials. Make sure they don't get back at each other. Wendell looks too tired to continue, Scotty. Well, Cortnell and Acton, are, they're, they've both gone to the dressing room. I'm sure Clark and Brooke will be gone. And Rouse to Marouk. Long shot, knocked down. Just two seconds left. There goes the horn, and for the second game in a row at Maple Leaf Gardens between these two teams, it ends in a tie, not a scoreless tie, but a 5-5 tie. A warrant has been taken out for the arrest of Dino Cicerelli. The charge is assault under Section 245 of the Criminal Code. Charges against professional hockey players may be unusual, but they're not new. In the 70s, several players were charged with assault. This tape shows Philadelphia Flyer Don Selesky swinging his stick at a Metro police officer. Several of his teammates were also charged with assault. Shenanigans on skates, like these, earned them a name, Broad Street Bullies. However, while charges have been laid, there have been no convictions in the courts. We have officers at Maple Leaf Gardens for every hockey game. And if we feel that the assault is a little more than what falls under the guidelines of a, a bit of a scuffle in a hockey game, we do conduct investigations and we do speak with the Crown Attorney. 